Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. We're continuing the construction of the legacy block on the first floor of the house. And you're gonna notice in this video that the sound is a little weird. There's places in here that because these guys were listening to music and I'm trying to avoid a copyright strike on this video and having it taken down, I have turned the ambient sound down in this and I've, I've put some music in. Um, you know, it's one of those things that uh, they wanted to have a better work environment and I figured it was easier to just turn the music down while they were building in the video. This is the day after the first pour and what you uh, see going on is they're starting to go up with the next two courses of block. They'll come in with the, the next course and then as they're coming around, you're gonna see them building lentils and headers to go over the, the door and window openings. And once they get that all established, then they're gonna come back with the next course so we can get ready for the final pour and start putting up the speed floor, structural steel, and all the things for the, the second floor. All right, folks, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for coming along with us on this journey of building a house and, and watching our videos. And, and I ask you to hit the like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all of the things that are going into building this house. Here they're installing a piece of rebar between the courses of block and you're going to see uh, they're going to push this down and then pull it back and make sure it's tied in with that rebar cage for the column that you see sticking up in the corner just to make sure that there's good overlap and everything is is tied in from the column into the wall. In the foreground here, you can see some of the rebar stirrups that I've been up in a previous video being used to build a rebar cage that's going in the header over the French doors and uh, windows on the back wall of the house. And in the background here, you can see they're going up with the final course of block for the first floor on that same wall.
here you see them using an electric chainsaw to cut the web out between the two faces of that block to allow clearance to get it over the rebar cage. And what this is gonna do is basically provide a 18 inch deep header over these window and door opening. It's kind of like when you would fabricate a wooden header to go over a, a door in a stick frame house. You're gonna put you know, heavier material in there and make it the full thickness of the framing to support the load over that opening. Now they're fabricating and installing the bucks for the garage door openings. And they're gonna use these to support the rebar and then the block that they cut the webs out of to form the header over these garage doors the same way they did in the previous section of the video. Acá está pegando, mano. Ya. Ok, ahí está. ¿Te traigo la escuadra, Mari? Sí, mojo, homie. ¿O oh, si va? Sí, para ponerlo para que los pares de aquí de la escuadra, ahí, mira. ¿Y ahí no ocupo? No, no, varilla no ocupo aquí, homie. Varilla no ocupo aquí. Aquí lo que ocupo es. Realmente, además.
Now we're getting ready to cut the inside lip of the block at the final height for the bottom of the second floor. And we're only cutting the inside edge of the block or the inside face of the block because that will leave a two inch insulation layer around the edge of the second floor slab to provide insulation and prevent you know cold and heat from coming straight into the edge of that slab where it meets the outside wall. Now, doing the final prep work for the pour to finish out the first floor block, they're going around and reinforcing all of these headers with plywood and all thread through both faces of the block. And they're going ahead and installing the embed plates in these columns. The embed plates are what the ends of the I-beam that support the second floor joists get welded to. The Nelson studs go into the rebar cages, everything gets tied and bolted in place with all thread, and then we'll pour concrete and you know, it locks around those Nelson studs and holds the plates in place. Since the weather was a little crazy, we had rain possible all day. The wind was gusting and it was cold out. You know, I didn't uh, fly the drone. I, I had assumed that people were seeing enough of the drone footage of filling these blocks and different concrete work uh, to this point. But what you see these guys doing as they go along here filling this last uh, two courses of block they're taking rebar L's or angles and dropping them into these cells and they're going to use a inch and a half piece of two by to space them up because those are going to tie into the second floor slab and help lock everything together the vertical rebars you see sticking up out of these particular cells are part of the gable end wall on the garage. So once the second floor is poured, these will be sticking up and it'll tie the block in for the gable ends on the garage and the main part of the house.
One thing I've been extremely impressed with uh, about this crew is just how conscientious they are about maintaining this job site and keeping it clean, keeping it picked up every day. And, you know, pouring this concrete is a, a dirty business. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to have spills, you're going to have stuff that, you know, gets spread around. And when they were done with these two pours, they had cleaned up the slab so well that you couldn't tell that concrete had ever been spilled on it. I mean, it was absolutely amazing to me just how conscientious they have been about this. folks i think that's going to wrap this video up for today thank you for watching and uh y'all have a good day